What I highly recommend during the consultation is having a couple things up and ready to go. Your home exercise platform and then some kind of writing educational tool. For me, I just use PowerPoint Writer because it's easier for me. If you're using Zoom meetings, they do have a whiteboard in here that you can use. And then there are all kinds of other whiteboard writing options out there. I like to use PowerPoint because we can save it as part of the file then too, so it becomes part of the educational components. So here's how I run the consultation. If you were my client, I would go over the medical history, I would confirm the medications and the supplements to make sure we're on the same page, confirm any diagnostics that have been completed. All of that's just done verbally. And then I would confirm what their goals are for this telehealth consultation. It's really important to confirm goals up front so clients aren't thinking that we can provide them with full services in telehealth. We can't. We can give them information about if this is what kind of lameness that it's likely associated with the disease, or I think the way we are going to use it at university in the future is with known diagnoses then to modify home programs for clients at a distance when I can't find you guys because there's still not enough of us in the world. So I think it's really important to consider that component. Then the other piece we do with the clients, once we're clear about their goals and what we can and cannot do, then I immediately jump in and just start teaching them components. I only will review videos with them if the video really gives me information. So if the client says their dog is left thoracic limb lame, but it's right, I might show the client the video and just explain why we think it's right thoracic limb lameness. Then what I will do now is show you guys the writing tool that I use. So here is sweet and simple PowerPoint, and then they get these beautiful Sasha kindergarten drawings where I keep it as simple as I can. And by keeping it this simple, what I find for clients is they are less intimidated. Um, you doctors who are on the line, you guys are really smart and you draw really fancy pictures and use big words like meniscus. And for some clients that can be quite intimidating. So as a rehab therapist, I come in and then I call it kindergartening the process. So if we had a dog who had had a TPLO and maybe had some arthritis in here, I might describe what this arthritis is, how that can change what happens inside the joint, how it can be staged at different phases in life. You can have a little or you can have a lot and that our goal for this dog right now is to get the inflammation out from inside the joint. I can write words over here. I can change colors. I mean, when I'm really doing this for a client, it becomes super fancy, and then it's an educational tool for the client. What I've seen other people do that works really well also is if you guys already have pre-created documents that have this educational information on it, just use that. If it already exists, use what you've got so you're not having to reinvent the wheel. And in addition, I will show you guys shortly um, how you can add documents in the near future to canine home exercises too. So I do this client education piece. And once I've done this education piece, I come back just like this, I'm talking to you. And I say, do you have any questions about this stifle disease? Do you have any questions about osteoarthritis? Do you have any questions about what our goals are for your dog today? So it's giving them a little bit of information coming back to center. If they don't have any other questions, then I move on to the canine home exercise platform. If they do, then I move back on to my writing instruction. So let's move back to the exercise platform so I can show you how to build the program from here. So let's say we have this client, dog has 
known history of cruciate disease now as an old dog, severe osteoarthritis. And what I'm teaching the clients today is how are you going to take care of this painful joint at home? So I open the exercise, click on the video, and then down here, there's a little expand button. If you click on this expand button, then the clients can see the whole entire video. And then I will describe to them, your dog is in lateral, you'll want to take a blanket or a bolster, you could even have a yoga bolster at home. You want the point of the toe to be mildly higher than the point of the hip. So the clients can see the angulation, they can see what it looks like. As I'm going through this, I'm asking the clients very specific questions about, do you have a question about what you're gonna put your dog's leg on? Are there modifications we can help you make at home? Because certainly not everybody's setup is gonna look exactly like it does in the video. Then when I'm talking about manual therapy options, I spend a lot of time before I even show the video on where the clients are gonna place their hands. So stifle traction for a severely osteoarthritic stifle joint might make this joint feel better, is how I would explain it to the client. They're gonna put one hand just above the knee joint and then one hand at the ankle bones. And I keep it kindergarten simple for the clients, even if they're brilliant PhDs. And they're gonna hold with the top hand and then they're gently gonna pull with the bottom hand this bottom hand is gonna pull the ankle bones away. And this is what it looks like. I say to them, it doesn't look like much and it shouldn't. This is no different than the action you do when you're trying to pop a knuckle, for example. You wanna do it with a slow controlled force. It's just sustained downward pressure but you are not expecting a pop like when you would pop your knuckle. It's just that kind of slow sustained pressure. That's how I teach manual therapies. And then when I'm teaching a physical activity, I'll show this one. Of course, we would not give this exercise to this acute stifle dog, but so I can show you guys how I describe exercises to clients in telehealth is I first describe the therapist setup. So the therapist is standing, we have the peanut squeezed between their legs, we have the treat in the hand in front of the dog's mouth. Then I ask, do you have any questions about the setup? If they're good with the setup, then I move on to the position of the dog. What we're looking for with the position of the dog is beautiful hip extension, a nice straight spine, and a beautiful forward head position. So what we're trying to do is get the dog to lean up and over the peanuts while they're maintaining that beautiful spine position. So then I ask if they have any questions about positioning. So we've got therapist position, dog position, and then we're going to do dog exercise. And I will describe as we go, you lure the dog up onto the device and then slowly moving the cookie down and forward in front of the front paws with good control, et cetera. So in my experience now doing a number of these telehealth consultations, my most challenging part and the place we tripped our toe on when we first started was we didn't teach the clients where to put themselves and we didn't teach them where to put the dog so when we forgot to do those two pieces, what ended up happening then was the clients were contacting us back and saying, hey, I can't get my dog to do this, or hey, this doesn't look like what it looks like in the video, or <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So in order to um, facilitate less work on the backside, we have started to do just taking the time in the consultation to describe therapist position, dog position, and then reviewing how to do the exercise. While you guys are here, if you are working by yourselves, just highlight these exercises. 
and build your home program from here. You don't need to complete this while you're online with the client, but it will save you time sending this afterwards.